you know, the, the yes. incredible oh, breath that Thank you, you see. Oh, yes. This, you know, it was great. Okay. So, Martha, you're telling me now that you almost made a movie in Dallas? Well, I was going to do a film that was set in the world of, it was a comedy love story set in the world of the Dallas debutantes, and it was a tremendous experience uh, researching it and coming down. I went to the debutante ball, and the first one, and uh, it, the whole thing was just a great experience. I loved Dallas. I was crazy about it, and I really wanted to do a picture there, but that picture, pictures change and evolve, and the, it evolved away from that, and I ended up doing Real Genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, uh, that can't be all bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the film very much, Real oh, Genius. Oh, that's terrific. I Thank think you. it's a, a lot of fun, and I think young people particularly will just have a ball with it. I sure hope so. Uh, of course, we have to talk about now uh, the fact, maybe the day will come, Martha, when we won't have to talk about this, but right now I think we do. The woman <laughs> director. Now, a very famous Hollywood director said, a man, a male director, once said that the way he gets control of the set is that the very first day he goes in and he fires somebody. And God. And, and then it turns out that it's, uh, he's done that before, and he uses the same guy. He's a shill, but the rest of the crew doesn't know that, see? So anyway, I'm wondering, <laughs> how do you work? How do you get, how do you take hold of the reins? First of all, the fact that he uses a shill makes it a nicer story. <laughs> but um, I, I, uh, I just go in prepared, and I know what I'm doing. I mean, I've never had a problem with a crew or having control of a set. I just, it's in fact the question that people would ask that is even kind of dumbfounding to me. I, you know, I think if you know what you're doing, you know what you want and you get in there and you impress people with your knowledge, your professionalism, and your, your expertise, and your respect for them, uh, it'll all follow automatically. If there's someone who's a problem on the set, then you try to get rid of them, but that's, hopefully you hire people that, I mean, you, you do try to hire people that you work well with, so there shouldn't be a problem in the first place. Of course, uh, a recent director, uh, Robert Zemeckis had to fire an actor five weeks into production. Can you imagine what that would be like? That's pretty, that's very bad. I mean, that's a very bad situation for everybody. It's a very expensive situation to have to reshoot all those scenes with another actor. Very traumatizing, I'm sure, for, the, for him and for the studio and for the actor. Terrible. But, uh, you know, in a way, I have to admire him because it must have been uh, more difficult to do that than, than to continue on. Well, it means that the situation could not be continued, and that's a terrible thing to have to recognize that something like that is, can't be continued. Uh, when All I can say is thank God it didn't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you um, are directing a very difficult scene, Martha, how do you tend to, to do? Do you, are you apt to yell and scream sometimes? Uh, do you just get uh, tense and, and uh, you know, try to show restraint or uh, how do you react? Well, first of all, um, I think that, you know, Stanislavski's first rule of thumb for treating an actor and directing an actor is do not scare the actor. So I never yell and scream. The only reason that I would ever yell and scream would be that there would be absolutely no other way to deal with the situation. I think that uh, if a scene is difficult, meaning it's difficult for the actors, let's talk about that, then that means that they're struggling within themselves. And uh, you, know, you can usually find other ways to deal with that, that there are problems, particularly with young actors who are relatively inexperienced, in terms of craft. I mean, they just don't know how to get the feelings out. It isn't that they don't have the feelings, it's that they don't know how to get them out. And I know enough about acting that I try to work with them in a more um, expert way <laughs> than just yelling. Now, it is true, when I was young and I was, I was being directed, I was acting, my, my director did yell at me to get me to cry. You know, it worked once, you know, but when you have to do the play, over and over and over again, how do you do it again? Now in a movie you can say, okay, you could scream and get the effect of that one thing, that one scene, and sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to make a noise so that they really react, but it w won't ever be that way again. So it's better if you have an actor and you work with an actor who can do the response 
over and over again who can get the emotion out and you try to compensate for that in casting. Martha, what would you say to a young woman who has her mindset to be a film director? Uh, first of all, would you encourage her? Well, only the person can know if their drive is strong enough to propel them through all the difficulties of becoming a director. I wouldn't say anything different to a woman who wanted to become a director than a man outside of the fact that I would tell her that it would be probably more difficult for her but hopefully much less difficult for her than it was for me. So basically a young director, sh sh they should all do the same thing which is get some film that they've directed. In other words go to a school, get some money, you know, when they're ready and make a picture so that they have something to show. It's very hard to say you're a director unless you have something that you've directed. If you are, however, a person who is, for example, an actor, director, then you can move into directing via acting and you can move into directing via writing. So there are, are other areas where you can segue into it, but um, primarily it would be through making a picture. <laughs> You have one of the most smashing finales to a movie. <laughs> it is great. It's great. It is wonderful. And I don't want to give it away. But let me just ask you a couple of questions. First of all, did you ever use any miniatures in that scene? No, there are no miniatures. Everything is absolutely real. <laughs> because first of all, it was the cheapest way to do it, and the most authentic way to do it, and the only way that we could do it, and tie people in and have it look real. So that's what we did. And uh, then when you were actually shooting it, uh, did you have more than one camera going at the same oh, yeah. time? How many? On, any, on the big finale you know, action scenes, we had five, always five cameras going at one take. And we did the whole thing three times. Good heavens. <laughs> and it does involve popcorn, we can say yes, that much that. to people. Okay. Uh, any idea, the amount of popcorn or the cost of the popcorn? Oh yeah. I mean, the, the amount of popcorn was 140 tons of popcorn. Uh, that was 100 tons exterior and 40 tons interior. And the um, cost of the popcorn got, I don't know, I think it was $100,000 worth of popcorn, but that's nothing. The entire gag, if you put all the special effects together of what we did with it, cost about a million dollars. And how much was the total budget for the film? $13 million. That's, uh, that's a little higher than average, or right in the average. No, no, actually I'd say it's around average, but, but, but that's because there are a lot of big pictures being made. This is a, this is a very big picture. It was a, it's a nice budget for a big picture. I mean, it's not a huge budget for a big picture. Uh, it's one of the largest budgeted films that a woman has ever directed. I mean, Mrs. Sofal is right up there, and I don't know about National Lampoon's Vacation, but it's, it should be by, up there somewhere. Well, Martha, I'm very happy to have a chance to meet you and talk with you. I enjoyed Valley Girl very much, oh, too, thank I you. must tell you. And uh, continued success with your career, and particularly Real Genius. I hope it turns out to be a big hit for you. Oh, thank you very much. And do come to Dallas and make oh, that well. movie. You bet. <laughs> okay. Or some movie. Yes, uh, some movie. <laughs> Thanks, well, Martha. Take stuff. Great. Nice interview. Well, tapes Ryan, and then we have the speed. Martha, I once read about a director who says the way he gets the reins on the set is the first day he goes in and he fires somebody. Well, then it turns out that he has done that on subsequent films, but the guy is, it's the same guy he keeps firing, it's a shill. <laughs> no, what, what do you do to take control of the reins? Are you the sort of person that, if you're directing a difficult scene, do you yell and scream or do you just uh, get kind of tense and try to restrain yourself? What do you do? Okay. Um, what sort of advice would you give to a young woman who has her heart set on being a film director? What sort of advice do you have for a young woman who wants to be a film director? First of all, would you encourage her? Okay. 
you have one of the most smashing finales I've seen in a long, long time. Now, we don't want to give it away except to say that it has to do with popcorn. First of all, did you use any miniatures in that scene? Do you have any idea how much popcorn you used or the cost of it? Okay, let's just do uh, reactions now. Okay, thank you. God.